In this video, I want to talk about MySQL Workbench and make sure everyone is familiar with the environment. Uh, this is the environment we're going to use to connect to our instance of MySQL um, server on the computers. Actually, there's already a very good video that describes this environment that I am going to um, make include as part of my own. Um, he is allowed a Creative Commons attribution, but it's old. It's 2013, so the interface is a little bit different, and plus he covers some things that, that uh, we're not going to do in this class, and so I'm, I'll whittle it down to just the good stuff. But before I go to his video, let me show you. When you first open MySQL, you'll be on this Home tab right here. I'll go ahead and close out this other tab. So you'll be here, and you probably have one box, which is a connection. Right, so this is a, how we get connected to SQL Server. These other boxes are for later in the quarter. Um, we experiment creating other users and connecting to the database with different permissions. Um, down here is uh, there's also a modeling tool built into my SQL Workbench. And so I'm going to click on this plus and it opens up a modeling tab. And so for creating our ERD diagrams, like in week eight, we'll be using that tool. I'll go ahead and close out that tab. Right now, to get connected to your instance of SQL Server, you just single click on this and it'll open up. And the reason I wanted to do this video is because yours might look a little different than mine, and I'll show you why that is. So, first of all, there's several windows here. This SQL Additions window you can turn on or off with this button over here on the right. Same thing with the output down here, it can be on or off with this button. And these navigator panes over here can be on or off with that button. So when you open yours up, I'm not sure which of these you'll have turned on or off. So it might look a little bit different. The other thing I want to mention is notice I have server management right here. All right, we're not going to mess with this very often. But down here is a tab for schemas. MySQL, by the way, uses the word schemas as synonymous with database. So when they say schemas, they are referring to database. So these are my databases. I have a, a bunch you probably don't have yet. Um, this information schema and performance schema may or may not be showing on yours. So let me show you some of the settings around these um, this pane so that we can make sure we ours all look alike. Okay, so how you do that is under edit and there's a thing here for preferences. Okay, and under preferences there's all different kinds of things uh, that we can change. The ones I'm interested in are under this thing right, this tab right here called SQL Editor. Alright, yours may not be selected and that's right here. Show schema, whoopsie, no, show metadata and internal schemas. If I turn that off and now what's it doing? And hit refresh. That's the refresh button. Notice the performance and information schema went away. Okay, so if you're not seeing those schemas, which are basically some metadata about your databases, you may want to go in here and under SQL Editor, have it show, show metadata and internal schemes right there. Okay, another button or checkbox I'll show you while we're here is safe updates. Later in the quarter, we're going to be doing updates, and we may get an error message that's saying, Whoa, well, we can't do this update because safe updates is on. So there's a way to type something to turn that off, or we can come in here and turn that off. So right now, I know this doesn't mean anything, but just be aware when we get to to learning update statement, we may have to come in here and turn this off. The other button or checkbox, I keep calling it a button, checkbox I'll show you in here is the combining management tools in the schema tree. So right now it's unchecked and that's why I have over here on the left two tabs, management and schemas. If that's checked and you hit OK, well then management's up here and schemas are down here and it's not two separate tabs. I don't care how you do it, um, but just be aware why yours might look different than mine throughout the quarter. You can hide the management part right here by clicking that arrow. And now all you're seeing are your databases. You can um, hit that arrow again and the management tab comes back. Or you can go into preferences under SQL Editor. Don't combine them. 
and then they just become two tabs down here. Okay. The next thing I'll show you that appears to be new because it doesn't show up in that other video that I'll, I'll add to the end of this one, and that is the gentleman's going to show you this uh, this panel right here, the SQL additions. Okay, and he's going to do a lot of description of our uh, explaining of the snippets tab. On his, he's not showing this context help, which is kind of a cool little tab. What it does is, is as you start to type commands, create, and then let's say we're going to create a table, space. If you select that command, and sometimes I think it'll do it even if you don't select it, it will come up with the syntax for all the things you can do with the create table. Now in another video I will talk about how to read this syntax, but basically right now it's saying you got to type the word create, it's optional to type temporary, you need to type table, you could type if not exists in table name, I won't get any further into it, but it's kind of handy. So if you're confused on what to do on a particular command, or let's say do a create database, right there, now there's the syntax help for that particular command. These two buttons right here, if this is pressed, if I can do it, that is automatic context help. If that is on, it means as you type stuff, it will automatically bring up that help. Otherwise, you can hit this button, which is to get um, put your cursor over here and then say, okay, I need help with that particular line. All right, so in the video coming up, he doesn't talk about that, and yet that's a pretty darn handy feature. And one more thing I forgot to mention back here when we were under Edit Preferences. So let me go back there. If you notice, as I was typing, it was kind of auto-completing um, the, the commands, and then the keywords become capitalized. So under Query Editor right here, there is a few enable code completion automatically started and use uppercase keywords on completion. So I have those checked. Um, sometimes I find it can be annoying, and so I may come back through here and uncheck it at times, but it's kind of nice as you start typing things, it will fill in the information as you go, and then all you have to do is hit the tab key, and, and you aren't, it, it just requires less typing. Now at this point, I'll add a few minutes of video from the other gentleman, because he does a great job of explaining a lot of these buttons up here and the various windows and what you can do with them, and I, I can't do a better job, so... I'll let him take it over. MySQL Workbench is a powerful database management tool for MySQL. It has visual modules for creating, executing, and optimizing SQL queries, for designing, modeling, generating databases, and for configuring servers, administering users, and viewing database health. The SQL Editor contains a query pane for typing and executing queries, a SQL Additions pane for containing SQL statements, an output pane and an object browser for displaying metadata. The outer panes can be hidden if you wish. Queries are executed against the default database, chosen by the connection or by double-clicking the schema. After selecting a database, you can execute statements against that database. The editor pane highlights the syntax of your statements as you type. Execute your statements by using the query menu, toolbar icons, or if you prefer, shortcut keys. You can write as many statements as you like in the editor, for example, to save as a script. If you have multiple statements in the editor, you can execute all statements together or execute only the statement under the cursor. The toolbar contains icons to execute the current statement or the whole contents of the editor. When you execute multiple queries together, each query generates its own results tab. The object browser shows schemas and their structural contents and lets you see the object information for databases, tables, columns, and other objects. If you click a table, it shows summary information for that table. You can expand the list of tables to see additional metadata. By clicking on any of the columns listed, you can see that column's information. The browser also shows other structural information, such as any indexes attached to the table, and the names and definitions of any foreign keys. One very powerful feature allows you to generate the create statements for objects such as tables and stored routines, placing them into an editor so that you can view or modify the object. 
The editor has other features that are useful to database professionals. Many statements are longer than a line or two, and to make statements such as this one easier to work with, you can use the editor to reformat the statement. There is even a plugin to make all keywords in the statement uppercase to go along with the most common SQL conventions. On the right of the editor, you can view the SQL additions pane. You can add snippets of code to this pane by clicking on the toolbar icon. You can view these snippets, edit them, and execute them at a later stage. As well as your own snippets, the SQL additions pane contains many useful fragments of SQL syntax, for database management, various show statements. In the DDL category, various create, alter, and drop statements. And in the DML category, statements for querying and modifying data. Each snippet contains detailed syntax for each statement, including the various optional items. As with your own snippets, you can insert the stored code fragment into the editor at any time. The output pane records statements that you have executed, along with information on rows returned and duration. You can copy statements from the output pane to the editor to edit or re-execute them. If you have saved your own snippets to the SQL additions pane, you can re-execute them more easily. MySQL Workbench lets you edit data in various ways. Obviously, you can execute insert or update statements in the editor, but you can also edit data directly in the results of certain queries. In this case, the results pane shows the result of a query that aggregates data, so the result is marked read only. If instead we issue a query that doesn't aggregate and also includes a unique identifier such as a primary key in its column list, the result table for that query is editable. To edit any value, double click on it and you can edit it in place. Once you have completed your edits, click Apply. Workbench displays the update statement that performs the edit in a dialog, which you can then apply to the underlying table. You can also modify data in a similar way by right clicking a table in the object browser and by selecting Edit Table Data.